Hi everyone! Today I am going to talk about a new method to solve the spin glass problem. I will cover the following topics. What is a tropical tensor network? How to use the tropical tensor network to find the ground state energy of a spin glass? And how to use the tropical tensor network to count the ground state degeneracy? Let's start from the Songshan Lake Spring School Challenge. This is a challenge about solving the spin glass problem defined on a buckyball structure. A buckyball structure has 60 vertices and 90 edges. Each vertex represents an icing spin which can take value plus or minus 1. And each edge represents an antiferromagnetic coupling between two spins and this coupling is uniform. We can define the energy function as a summation of the interaction terms. The challenge asks what is the ground state degeneracy of this spin glass problem. The naive approach to solve this problem is to enumerate all possible spin configurations and find those with the lowest energy. This is not practical because the total number of the configuration is 2 to the 60s, which is beyond the ability of any modern computer. Today, we are proud to announce a new solution to this problem using the Tropical Tensor Network. So what is a ten Tropical Tensor Network? To answer this question, we need to know what is a tensor network first. A tensor network is a generalization of matrix multiplication. A matrix multiplication can be diagrammatically represented as a square with two legs, where each leg represents one of the matrix dimension. The connected leg means the dimension summed over in the matrix multiplication, where the open legs are remained in the output. If we generalize matrices to tensors, two arguments to multiple arguments, we will get a tensor network. Here, we have an example of tensor network of size 5. The five tensors have rank 2, 2, 3, 3, and 1. There are five inner degrees of freedom, i, j, k, l, m, and one outer degree of freedom, n. We can see a tensor network is also a sum product of tensor elements. A tropical tensor network with a, is a tensor network with tropical numbers as a tensor elements. Tropical numbers are numbers with tropical algebra, where the plus in a regular algebra is redefined as a max. The multiplication is redefined as a plus. Now the tensor network contraction becomes a max plus network. Interestingly, it has the same form as the spin glass ground state problem that we want to solve. Notice that if we put a minus sign before the energy function, the minimization becomes the maximization. Now we are ready to get our hands dirty. We first import several packages, including tropical numbers defining the tropical number types and tropical GMM, defining the fast tropical matrix multiplication, as well as let graphs and simple tensor networks for fast graph and tensor network operations. Let's play a bit with the tropical numbers first. Since we have redefined the plus and multiplication to max and plus, the zero element now is changed to the minus infinity in the regular algebra, where the one element now is changed to the zero. Also, since the max does not have an inverse, unlike the regular plus, we do not have the minus operation anymore. This is why it is called a semi-ring algebra rather than a ring algebra. However, 
what we want is counting the ground state degeneracy. To count the degeneracy, we add a new field that called the counting field to the tropical number. The counting field is initialized to 1. When doing multiplication, the counting field does the regular multiplication. It means when concatenating multiple subgraphs, the new degeneracy is a multiplication of subgraph degeneracies. When doing the plus operation, the counting field only add up those contribute to the maximum. In the package, the new element type is called counting tropical. To solve the buckyball challenge, we attach a vertex tensor to each tensor and an edge tensor to each edge. The vertex tensor is a delta tensor. It contains only two non-zero elements representing spin values plus and minus one. While the edge tensor is dense, its diagonal elements are negative coupling strands, while its off-diagonal elements are coupling strands. One can easily verify that the contraction of the tensor network gives you the negation of the ground state energy. In the following, I will show how to solve the buckyball challenge step by step. First, we construct the buckyball tensor network. We compute the spin locations and the edges. The tensor network constructor takes a vector of tensors as the input. The tensor legs are labeled. Legs with the same label are contracted. There are 150 tensors in total. 60 of them are for vertices, while 90 of them are for edges. The second step is finding a proper contraction order. So far, we have only shown the equivalence of this tensor network and the original spin glass problem, but haven't shown how the tensor network representation can help reducing the complexity of the problem. As we have mentioned, naively iterating over the spin configurations gives the complexity of 2 to the 60. The naive contraction of a tensor network gives the same complexity. The key point is the tensor network is usually contracted step by step rather than as a whole. The contraction order forms a tree, and this tree decides the space and time complexity of the algorithm. Here, we use the greedy algorithm to find a proper contraction tree. If we change the seed, we can see the time complexity and space complexity also varies. For someone who can access this notebook, one can also visualize the contraction step by dragging the contraction step slider. The third step is obtaining the result by contracting the tensor network. One can use the tropical type for obtaining the ground state only or the counting tropical type for obtaining both the ground state energy and its degeneracy. If you see 16,000 in the counting field, then congratulations, you get the correct answer to this challenge. Finally, I want to show you some useful resources for someone who wants to know more about tropical tensor network method 
and its performance. Please check our paper and another notebook with more details. For someone who are interested in learning more about tensor networks, here is a very cool website. In this website, you will see a lot cool examples and a very detailed tutorial. Also, here is a reference for finding the contraction order. Finding the optimal contraction order is known as NP-hard, which means unlikely to be solved in polynomial time. Hence, it is an actively developing open problem. If you are interested in learning more hard problems, The Nature of Computation is the book for you. Okay, now let's talk a bit about Bluetooth Notebooks. In this notebook, I did not use a lot of fancy features. I used two functions, left, right, and up, down, to manage the layout using tables. For the plots, I mainly use the Compose and VisNet. Also, because there are several 3D visualization in the notebook, I use the coordinate transformation, static arrays, and rotations to assist, assist the coordinate translation. For example, in, uh, to visualize this buckyball structure, I used the tr camera, camera transformation. Here is an example of layout the texts and formulas. The up down, the combination of up down and left right can create any grid layout for you. And also, there is a highlight function. You can use the highlight function to highlight a seg uh, text segment. All right. Thank you, Jingguo. What a beautiful notebook. That was incredible. Um, I should say that this notebook is also on our live demo site, and people can uh, look at it. But uh, I made a mistake in my slider server, and particularly this notebook isn't working right now. I'll fix it next week. But I think we should recommend that people download the notebook and try it out themselves. And then they can also see how these tricks work, like left and right. Um, my first question was, um, when people see this notebook, they think like, wow, it's so pretty. How, how can I do this? So would you say anything to people who, are, who want to learn how to do layouts, how to do custom designs, these cool plots? Is there anything you would recommend? Oh, it looks like it looks like we, we, have, yeah. we have some technical issues. Oh no. <laughs> okay, let's let's see if it's gonna work.
Streaming is NP hard. <laughs> Yesterday we had Connor Burns, one of Purdue's developers, also managing the stream. Thank you, Connor. Today it's me, and that's why everything is a bit new today. Um, wish we had Connor here. I actually put up a picture of Connor. You can see him right there. So he's with, with his in spirit. Um, apparently that was not enough to fix all the technical issues. Hmm. It's uh, very nice to see that Pluto is actually used for things. So it's education at the beginning and then versus yeah. actually a continuation beyond it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think so too. Uh, this is beyond anything, of course, that I could make myself. Uh, so that's that's super cool. Um, and I hope that like people from the same field will see this. Mm. It's like, wow, I can, I can make this in Pluto. I, I wish I had these uh, notebooks when I studied physics twenty years ago. <laughs> you know, imagine all the academic papers would look like this. That would be mm. so nice. Okay, it looks like, okay, <laughs> one more time. Jingo, can you try yeah. to say something? Yeah, yeah working, okay. Nice, but. Well, <clears throat> Thank you for your talk. Um, yeah. Thanks. Somehow 90 degree. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. That's okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> thanks uh, uh, for offering this chance to like, talk about this topic. Uh, the tricks about the tricks, the uh, 3D plotting. I, I think, yeah, it's a combination of uh, <clears throat> the compose and the, the 3D transformation library. What's that? What's the name? The name is a bit long. <laughs> Coordinate transformations. Could you quickly explain what compose is for people who don't know? Yeah, compose is a very remarkable package. Uh, it's uh, fit with Pluto very well. Uh, you can, um, if you, it is a pure S, SVG and um, it's somehow better than Luxor because Luxor will generate a file, local file for you, but Compose just, just a fit into the HTML. So that if you put a text into the Compose plot, you can select and copy the text too. And so, Compose is very remarkable, and also I made a, an extension called VisNet for net for visualization, um, so that uh, I can show the network structure more easily. And also, there is um, together with the coordinate transformation, and the, yeah, I can I can <clears throat> translate trans uh, I can translate the uh, location of the spins and project them into a dimensional uh, position so that then render it with business. Yeah, <clears throat> I think it's a very cool combination of uh, like a transformation package with a 2D plotting package and then you have 3D plotting, which is, is awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's not a real 3D. <laughs> right. Okay. A flat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you again, Jingguo. Uh, everyone, go to the Pluto.com website and download the notebook run yourself. And we'll go on to the next talk, which is simulation and steel trust design. So, see you at the next talk. <laughs>